This is part 37 of Angular 2 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the Angular router service navigate method. This method is very useful when we want to programmatically navigate the user from one page to another page. Let's understand this with an example. Here is what we want to do. On our employee component, which displays a specific employee details, we want to include this button back to employees list. And when we click this button, we want to redirect the user to the employee list page. So within the click event handler of this button, we are going to write code to programmatically navigate the user from employee component to employee list component. So first, let's include the required HTML to get this button on our employee component. Let's flip over to Visual Studio. Here is the view template of our employee component. So in the end, let's include an input element of type button and we are going to use bootstrap CSS classes to style this button. So let's use btn and btn primary CSS classes and the value on the button is back to employee list. Let's close the button, save our changes and reload this web page. Notice now we have back to employee list button, but it is kind of attached to the table above. So let's wrap this button in a div element and then give some margin on the top. So let's include a div element here, a set margin top to 5 pixels and let's close the div element right here. Let's format this a bit, save our changes and then reload this web page one more time. Notice now the button is not attached to the table. Next, let's use the router service navigate method to programmatically navigate from employee component to employee list component. So let's flip over to Visual Studio one more time and here is the employee component class file. So the first thing that we need to do here is import router service from Angular router. We are already importing activated route. In addition to that, let's also import the router service. Now, to be able to use the router service navigate method, we need an instance of this router service. So let's use dependency injection to get an instance of this router service. Notice at the moment, this employee component class has a dependency on employee service and activated route service. To get an instance of these two services, we're using dependency injection. So let's also use dependency injection to get an instance of router service. So let's format this code first. So we can see all of it a little better. And then let's include a constructor parameter. So now we have specified that we also have a dependency on router service. So whenever an instance of this employee component is created, an instance of router service is injected into this component. And we can use this private variable throughout this employee component class. Finally, let's include a method within our employee component class which will have the required code to navigate the user. I'm going to call this method on back button click and this method is not going to return anything so the return type is void and in here we're going to use this private variable underscore router. So this dot underscore router dot and this object provides navigate method and to this method we specify the path of the route that we want to navigate to as an argument we want to navigate to this path forward slash employees and if you recollect from our previous videos we have already defined this route within our root application module which is app.module.ts so within this file we have that path employees defined already here and when we see this path in the URL we want the user to be redirected to employee list component and finally we need to bind to this method so within our employee component view template let's use event binding with event binding we use parenthesis and then we want to bind to the click event and to the click event we want to bind this method on back button click so let's save all these changes and reload this web page. Notice now when we click this button, we are redirected back to employee list component. Now let's quickly recap what we have done to programmatically navigate the user. First, within the view template, include the required HTML. Notice here, we are using Angular event binding to bind this method 
on back button click to the click event of the button and then within the component class import router service from angular router module and then use dependency injection to get an instance of the router service and then implement the on back button click method which is bound to the click event of the button and within this method we write the code to navigate the user so here we're using the navigate method of the router service and then we specify the path of the route to navigate to as an argument to the navigate method thank you for listening and have a great day